Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. May the Lord be with you. It's really good to welcome you to the chapel here at Bishop Thorpe Palace, the oldest part um, of the palace, where I say my prayers each day and where all my predecessors have prayed. And today, we remember before God, His Royal Highness, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, to renew our trust and confidence in Christ and to pray that together we may be one in Christ, through whom we offer our prayers and praises to the Father. Blessed are you, Lord our God, lover of souls. You uphold us in life and sustain us in death. To you be glory and praise forever. For the darkness of this age is passing away as Christ, the bright morning star, brings to his saints the light of life. As you give light to those in darkness who walk in the shadow of death, so remember in your kingdom your faithful servant, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, that death may be for him the gate to life and to unending fellowship with you, where with your saints you live and reign, one in the perfect union of love, now and forever. Amen. As it was in the beginning, it 
A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as Saviour of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Thanks be to God. In the last week, we've been hearing again and again the words of the Queen describing her beloved husband on their 50th wedding anniversary as her strength and stay. I'm struck by that phrase, which probably came into the Queen's vocabulary via the hymn, O strength and stay, upholding all creation. Those Victorian words are actually a translation of an ancient hymn which prays that God, the strength and stay of all of us, who alone remains unmoved in all the changes and chances of this world, might grant to each one of us a calm, unclouded ending with dawning glories of the eternal day. The Duke of Edinburgh was such a stalwart support, ever to be seen at the Queen's side at the public engagements they shared. He supported her work in other ways and he was there for her, at difficult times too, in their over 70 years of devoted marriage. He broke the news to her that her own father had died and that she was now queen, and in all the years since then, his love for her and their mutual joy, support and comfort have been an inspiration to many. In this generous, loving care, Prince Philip helped to reveal for us something of the love that God wants to show each one of us. As the first letter of St John says, if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God in them. A perfect love, a stalwart support, a strength and stay casts out fear, fear of the future, fear of separation, fear of the end of our lives. Cast out that fear because in Jesus, God has destroyed death. 
and has gathered all people to himself. As we remember Prince Philip, let us pray for the Queen, the royal family, and for all who mourn, that they may experience something of that perfect love of God shown to us in his Son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again and has prepared a place in glory for those who love him. Let us pray. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that we are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of His Royal Highness, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, for the love he received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time we may share with your servant Philip that clearer vision promised to us in the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with all who mourn. Our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, the members of the royal family, this nation and all the nations of the Commonwealth, that casting all our care on you, we may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us conclude our prayers with the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
May God, in his infinite love and mercy, bring the whole church, living and departed, to a joyful resurrection and the fulfilment of his eternal kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.